As to be expected of a premium American road car, Buicks are extremely quiet. And since many customers equate quality with a noise and vibration free vehicle, every effort should be made to solve noise and vibration complaints. It is our job to ensure that Buick remains at the top. Noise and vibration complaints are difficult to diagnose, but diagnosis can be made easier by using a systematic approach. Begin by verifying the complaint. In some cases, you may have to test drive the vehicle with the customer in order to verify the type of complaint. The next step in a systematic approach is to isolate the noise or vibration. During the test drive, with the customer or by yourself, determine what area of the vehicle the noise or vibration is coming from and under what kinds of road conditions it appears. After the test drive, fill out the know-how suspension worksheet or a similar form to help determine what the noise sounds like, where the noise seems to come from, what type of driving conditions produce the noise, and finally, whether the noise or vibration is more pronounced under certain weather conditions. For example, is the noise louder in cold weather or does it only occur on wet roads? Of course, information to answer this last question may have to come from the customer. Some suspension noises can be recreated by jouncing the vehicle. Jouncing the vehicle at each corner, you further isolate the noise. After identifying the sound or vibration and locating where it is coming from, you have two choices. The first is to go directly to the area where the noise seems to be coming from and perform component checks, looking for broken or damaged parts. To perform component checks, systematically check suspension components in the suspect area using the vehicle checks worksheet from the know-how reference manual. Since tire problems create many suspension noises and vehicle vibrations, check tire pressure and note tire condition before examining specific components. Following the worksheet in the know-how reference manual is a description on how to inspect suspension parts and drive axle boot seals and clamps. The second way to diagnose the complaint is based on symptoms. Certain parts usually make a particular noise. This is an effective method by which to diagnose suspension and drive axle noise and vibration. However, noise and vibration can be deceptive. A squawk that typically would come from a stabilizer bushing may come from somewhere else. In such a case, you must go back and perform component checks to solve the problem. Remember that component checks are necessary to confirm a complaint. This program concentrates on the most common suspension noises and vibrations that have been reported to Buick. A surprising number of noises come from the rear suspension area. On vehicles with an independent suspension featuring ball joints and adjustment links, a thump, clunk, or pop may be heard. This noise seems to come from the rear suspension or trunk area and occurs when the vehicle maneuvers around tight corners or crosses over small bumps. These thumps are typically made by ball joints and tie rod ends that require lubrication. But before servicing the ball joints, be sure to inspect the rear suspension components. Check them for proper installation and torque values. Most front wheel drive vehicles share a creaking noise which seems to come from the upper rear suspension or trunk area. Known as lumber noise, the noise comes from the springs moving against the upper spring insulators. Several factors inherent to front wheel drive design lead to lumber noise. First, front wheel drive vehicles are lighter than their rear wheel drive predecessors. In addition, a greater portion of a front wheel drive vehicle's weight is in front. Therefore, the rear springs must compensate for a greater relative change in weight when luggage and passengers are added to the trunk and rear seat. The result is more suspension movement, which means more spring movement against the spring insulators and the possibility of lumber noise. Other factors create a smooth ride, but increase the likelihood of lumber noise. For example, an independent rear suspension system allows each wheel to react independently to road irregularities, 
calling for more suspension movement. Also, springs and insulators must be soft enough to provide a compliant ride when the vehicle is unloaded. When the vehicle is loaded, additional movement occurs between the springs and insulators. While ironing out bumps, this suspension movement provides opportunities for noise. There are other noises that may come from the rear insulators. If the rear insulators are distorted, they may produce a squawk or squeak, especially in cold weather. Distorted insulators and insulators that are disturbed while performing other suspension service on a vehicle with more than 50,000 miles should be replaced. But not all upper rear suspension noises are caused by springs shifting against insulators or worn or distorted insulators. Sometimes deeper noises come from the rear suspension. If there is a complaint of a clunk coming from the rear suspension area, check the top coils of the rear springs for signs that they are banging against each other. Shiny spring surfaces indicate coil contact. If you suspect coil contact, dust the upper spring coils with talcum powder and test drive the vehicle. When the coils contact each other, they leave an imprint in the talcum powder. Another method of isolating coil contact requires the installation of a piece of insulating material, heater hose or something similar around the top coils. Then test drive the vehicle. If the insulating material eliminates the noise, replace the springs with new variable rate coil springs. If the noise continues, the variable rate springs must be replaced with straight rate springs. The rear springs can produce other noises as well. The Regal features an independent rear suspension system which uses a fiberglass monoleaf spring. To provide additional protection from overloading and subsequent suspension bottoming, a rubber auxiliary spring is used. If the auxiliary spring mounting bracket is misaligned and the suspension is compressed, the auxiliary spring contacts the mounting bracket, making a squeak. This is particularly true in wet weather. Springs and spring insulators compress and rebound during normal vehicle operation. In order to dampen spring oscillations, struts mirror spring movement. And since the struts serve double duty as shock absorbers and structural members, it's not surprising that they emit noises. When turning into a steep driveway or up onto a parking ramp, the struts may extend to their maximum travel and emit a clunk. If the vehicle is going fast enough, the struts may even make a thud. This does not damage the struts, but alarms vehicle owners. Struts designed with more strut rod travel are available for some models and are being developed for other vehicles. There are some noises common to both front and rear struts. When the vehicle goes over a bump or road irregularity that throws the vehicle in the air, the struts reach the end of their travel. The sudden extension causes a pop. A similar noise may be caused by hitting a deep pothole, which causes extreme suspension compression. On some models, the dust boot has been known to catch against the strut causing a loud popping noise. When the vehicle settles back down, or during normal suspension movement, a swoosh may sometimes be heard. This is a normal strut noise. Besides strut noises, abrupt driveways and parking ramps may generate other front suspension noises. Upon hitting one of these dips, a squawk may be heard coming from the outer stabilizer bushings. The noise occurs when the stabilizer bar turns slightly in the bushing that connects it to the control arm. This noise usually occurs only when the temperature is below freezing. Replace the outer stabilizer bushings with high compression bushings. A squeaking, itching noise may come from the front of the vehicle when making a sharp turn around a corner. This noise is found in some 90 Regals and is caused by movement between the strut mount cushion plastic stiffener, strut rod, and strut mount cushion. Eliminate this noise by removing the plastic stiffener. 
So far, we have looked at noises. What about vibrations? Powerful, softly sprung vehicles like this Park Avenue may demonstrate a shutter or waddle vibration while accelerating rapidly from a standing stop. Before the wheels start turning, the engine's torque lifts the front of the vehicle while forcing the rear down. Drive axle angles become extreme. If the inner CV joints rotate while at an extreme angle, they no longer operate as constant velocity joints and shutter can occur. Shutter may also occur if the vehicle is overloaded. When the vehicle is overloaded and the rear is low to the ground, the CV joints again operate at excessive angles. The S-Plan CV joint on some models eliminates most shutter problems. However, before replacing the drive axles, check the vehicle for worn or sagging springs. Vehicle trim height should be within specifications and should not vary from wheel to wheel by more than three quarters of an inch. Also, check electronic level control system operation. If the electronic level control system doesn't work or is misadjusted and the vehicle is heavily loaded, the tendency of the engine to lift the front of the vehicle is greater. With the rear suspension already compressed and more weight to get moving, the engine lifts the front of the vehicle even more when accelerating rapidly from a stop. This results in extreme drive axle angles and a possible shutter condition. It should be mentioned that CV joints have been mistakenly replaced because of noises. A vehicle with a broken engine mount makes a clunk noise, which sounds similar to the noise a worn inside CV joint makes. Engine mounts aren't stressed when the engine is idling, but when the vehicle is accelerating, a broken engine mount allows the engine to move and bump the frame or another part. The result is a clunk. Since this clunk occurs when the vehicle is moving, it is easily mistaken as a CV joint noise. Before replacing a CV joint, always check the engine mounts. Another noise that comes from the drive axle area and which results in the replacement of a drive axle, even though it doesn't sound like a bad drive axle, is hub squeak. On all front wheel drive models, except for the Regal, the hub knuckle seal must be lubricated when installing a drive axle. Failure to lubricate the hub knuckle seal results in a squeak. On the Regal, a hole in the strut knuckle allows for removal of the drive axle assembly without disassembling the steering knuckle. The Regal does not require lubrication of the hub knuckle seal. A surprising number of squeaks and rattles are misdiagnosed as coming from suspension parts. This is because they occur when the suspension reacts to bumps and cornering forces. A word of advice when diagnosing a rattle problem. Wiggle the parking brake cables and exhaust parts. For example, a squawk and rattle coming from the rear of the vehicle may be caused by the parking brake cable moving forward and backward through the metal support bracket grommets as the suspension responds to road irregularities. In most cases, the noise can be repaired by applying a good high-low temperature grease to the cable. Parking brake cables can cause other noises. Badly misaligned parking brake cables can rub against a wheel weight, making a bump noise. Parking brake cable noises can be tricky to diagnose. Metal is a great conductor. Parking brake cable noises can travel through the metal shell of the body and sound as though they are coming from the front instead of the rear of the vehicle. So again, if the noise is a dull rattling, inspect the parking brake cables for signs of contact with the body. Underbody rattles may be noted during normal vehicle operation or when running the engine up in neutral. One cause may be loose clinch nuts in either the exhaust intermediate pipe or underbody hanger brackets. Another cause of a metallic rattling may be a loose catalytic converter heat shield, a loose exhaust pipe heat shield, or a loose muffler heat shield. Tighten loose heat shield fasteners while maintaining sufficient clearance between the heat shield and body. And while talking about the exhaust system, there are other noises made from the exhaust system contacting suspension components. If the exhaust system is loose, a clunk may be heard when driving the vehicle around corners or over bumps. Check for signs of metal-to-metal -metal contact 
between the exhaust pipe and the stabilizer bar. Cornering, particularly if there are bumps or undulations in the road, stresses a vehicle's suspension and body, creating noises. Often mistaken for suspension noise, the fuel tank may move while driving over a bump while cornering, creating a groan or pop. The gas tank must be able to move to prevent the possibility of fatigue cracks from developing along the side of the tank. But too much movement can cause noise. Inspect the fuel tank, making sure insulation pads are in place and the fuel tank restraining strap bolts are securely torqued. Noises and vibrations are irritating to the customer who has to live with them and the technician that must locate them. A systematic approach is essential to fixing noise and vibration problems. Verify the complaint, isolate the noise or vibration, and then perform system checks or symptom diagnosis to locate the problem. Then, after making the repair, there is one more step. Verify the repair. If the complaint was isolated in the service bay, jounce the vehicle or test drive the vehicle to ensure the repair has eliminated the noise or vibration. Because as much as noises and vibrations detract from Buick's image as a premium American road car, efficient servicing of a noise or vibration complaint reflects well on you. And that's good for all of us.